guys, Erin here. This video will review some of the key takeaway messages that you learned in the Government of Canada research ethics tutorial. It will review some of the major principles and issues pertaining to ethics and research. Here's where this video fits into the context of our course and into the quantitative research process. So in general, the research ethics fall into really three larger categories respect for people, which means respect for human dignity and respect for uh, vulnerable people in particular, concern for people's welfare. So people have to know that they have the right, um, if they're going to participate in a study, for, to free and informed consent and that their responses will be um, kept private and remain confidential. Justice is another principle where research must be done in an honest an ethical way. Finally, all of this me all of this must ensure for research to happen that we balance the harms and the benefits. The benefits of the research must always outweigh the harms. So let's talk now um, in a little bit more detail about these. We'll talk about six major issues in ethics. First, above all, do no harm. The Hippocratic Oath applies to physical harm, but also to psychological harm. Last week, I introduced you uh, or reviewed for you, if you knew already, the Milgram experiment. This is a classic example of how the experimenter's authority can cause participants to do things that they might not normally do. And it really begs the question, is the psychological stress on the participants really worth the results of the study? This may seem straightforward, but it can get a little bit tricky. What about not receiving treatment when it's needed? For example, let's say you're interested in the effectiveness of a particular treatment for ADHD and you needed to study a group that received that treatment versus a control group that didn't receive treatment. Is it ethical for that other group to not receive treatment? <clears throat> well, these kind of questions usually have to be answered on a case by case basis. And it might be that it is the researcher's responsibility after the study is done to provide that treatment to the control group as well. The second major ethical issue is informed consent. What does that mean? Well, that means that participants have the information to know what will happen to them and why. This ideally would happen before they did the study, but it could also happen after in a debriefing session. This information must be presented in a way that participants actually understand. This is particularly important when working with children or with clinical populations. Um, how do we ensure that children really received informed consent? Well, when I worked at SickKids, we did this in two main ways. First of all, the parents provided consent on behalf of the children, but also the researchers had to write the consent form in a second way, in a way that the children would understand, and it had to be written in an age-appropriate way. It was then read to the participants and explained so that the kids could ask questions. So the kids really had an understanding of what would happen in the experiment, what would happen to them, um, etc. The sec, the that the. Another issue that falls into this is voluntary participation and withdrawal. Participants have to know that they are not obliged to do your study, that they are free to participate, but also free to stop when they want. This is particularly tricky in clinical um, research when it may be a participant's doctor who's actually doing the study. Another great example of this, or, or classic example, I shouldn't say great example, classic example is the Stanford Prison Experiment which you may have read about in your textbook or in other classes. I encourage you to check out this link or Google Stanford Prison Experiment trailer and you can watch um, an example of why this is so important. The third major issue is deception. Sometimes it's necessary for participants to not know exactly what will happen to them in a study or what the study is about in order to avoid some of those issues that we talked about last week, you know, the participants assuming the good subject role, for example, when we want to make sure that they're actually acting in a more natural way. So sometimes it's necessary, but what can we do to ensure that it's ethical? Well, the benefit of lying or not telling the whole truth to the participants must outweigh the harm. And it can never be that, that deception involves part of a study that could actually involve harm or distress to the participant. They have to know if that's going to happen, that it will happen. The deception also has to be justified. It has to be that the research couldn't happen in any other way. 
Finally, if deception is involved, there must be an extensive debriefing session so that participants understand what the whole reason of the study was, why deception was involved, and that there can be this reestablishment of trust between the participants and the researcher. The fourth major issue is confidentiality and non anonymity it's a hard word to say. So this means that participants know that their results will be kept private, secret, and that nobody will know that they participated in the study or what their results were. How can we keep these results private? Well, when we enter the data, let's say in an Excel spreadsheet, we would use codes or participant numbers rather than the participant's name. And if we had to keep track of participants' name and contact information, they're stored in a locked Excel sheet on maybe a password protected computer or USB key, or if hard copies are involved, they're kept in a locked filing cabinet in a locked room. Usually we need to have um, these kinds of um, identifiers like people's names or where they lived behind two locked doors. Finally, when we do the research study, we never report the results of individual participants. We instead report the results of a group. So it can never be that somebody reading the report would know that a particular score lined up with a particular person. Finally, or sorry, fifth is treatment of animals. We need to make sure that if animals are involved in our research that we also ensure that they're treated ethically. So this might mean ensuring that they have sufficient food and water, a clean and safe place to live, and that they don't experience un any unnecessary pain or suffering. Finally, the sixth major issue is that resort results must be reported accurately and honestly. You learned about this in the context of the Wakefield study and the huge fallout that happened with people believing that there might be a link between vaccines and autism. It also means that when you're writing, you avoid plagiarism, that you write in a way that reflects your own ideas and your own words rather than somebody else's. Your textbook gives some great tips of how, what things that you can do to avoid plagiarism. And when in doubt, ask. Ask your instructors or ask your TA. There's, no thing, there's nothing wrong with asking. So all of this really fits into two main larger categories, responsibility to participants to ensure their welfare and dignity, um, regardless of whether they're human or non-human. The safeguard for this is a research ethics board. Every institution that um, allows for research has a particular board of people that review all research proposals to uh, ensure that participants will be treated ethically and um, make suggestions where this might not be the case. So Brock, for example, has a research ethics board. The second major category is responsibility to science to ensure that public records are accurate and honest. Safeguards for this is the peer review process where other researchers will review research to ensure that it's done in an honest and accurate way. And the second safeguard is things like Turnitin to ensure that you're using your own words in your own reports rather than somebody else's. So to summarize, researchers have a responsibility to be ethical to participants and to science. And we talked about six major ethical issues. Finally, when in doubt, ask. Thanks so much for listening. We'll see you next time.